No! Definitely gonna do some work in this video on the car, but first, I wanna say hello to a new friend, and before that, I wanna say goodbye to an old one. St. Patrick's Day 2019. Last time I'm gonna see her. 370, suck, sorry, 387,000 miles on it. And it's over. 210 bucks. Had her since April 2014. She was a good car. She was a good car. without further ado, I'm gonna introduce to you my new daily. Let's check it out. Oh yes, another Accord. 2005 Accord, really nice. Um, really awesome, uh, super excited to have it. I was looking all over the state of California and this is the best looking one. It's a 2005 EX. The leather's really nice, no tears at all. A little bit of scuffing in the back due to shoes, but um, stick shift of course. The stock radio drains the battery really badly. Uh, I don't know if it's just drawing a lot of current or whatnot. So a lot of people put in aftermarket head unit. This one is awesome, this Pioneer. Uh, it has uh, Bluetooth and everything. The mileage was a little high, 171,000 miles, but um, I got the out the door price down to 6,100. The original they wanted 6,300 out the door. Another thing I wanna show you is what's under the hood because that's another thing I'm excited about. Oh yes. K series motor, K 24A4 to be exact. It does not have the torque of the F23, and uh, that's I'm sad to see that go. But it's got more power on the higher end. The, th the only thing that's annoying, if you want to replace the starter on these K series motors, it's actually underneath the intake manifold, so you have to take that off, which is really annoying. Um, other than that, there's a lot of room in here. I mean, you could see all the way down to the ground, in both the front and the back, and of course the exhaust is on the back side and the intakes on the front. Um, and, you know, maybe one day, you never know, could end up in something else. Okay, let's get started some business here. I need to pull this out and put it there, like I said already, but it's way too heavy, even without the motor, for my bad back to push it. I don't know if you could tell, but this is kind of on a hill, and so uh, it's not wanting to budge without two people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach that toe strap on top of the pilot to the pilot, and we're gonna Pull this guy out and then I can push it the rest of the way. Whew. If that isn't a testament to the hill this driveway's on, I don't know what is. Um, so this is the position it's gonna be in until we get it running. So let's begin. I've got a really awesome friend um, on the YouTube channel, CB Dreamer, a subscriber to the channel, sent me the 4040 prop valve. It's stamped 4040 on it, and this is what you use to um, get a good distribution of brake fluid pressure to the rear once you convert to the discs in the rear. So that's what I'm gonna put on now. This is out of a um, Integra, DA Integra, so those early 90s Integras. Uh, it's pretty easy to get out, but if you don't have a uh, <laughs> flare nut wrench, you can just cut the lines. It turns out I don't have a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench, which is the size you need for these nuts. So here's the stock prop valve for uh, the CB Accords. It's 30-30 for all of the uh, drum rear brake Accords. And uh, we're gonna take that off and this 40-40 prop valve is a direct replacement, which is nice. The bracket's not gonna work because from an, a DA Integra is on the other side of the car, but um, it's definitely secure enough to just go right in. Uh, notice how I got a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench, a nice thick one, a Duralast. 
know it's not the best, but it's really thick. You do not go in there and start trying to take these nuts off with an open-ended wrench. You will strip it, and uh, once you strip those, you can't get them off, you're screwed. So please don't do that. Oh, I just saw this as I was leaving. So that means a whole new radiator is going in, but uh, they're easy to find, thankfully. All right, guys, we're on our way to um, Honda Mechanics that I really trust. I've, uh, any job I've never been able to do on my car, I take it to them. They're gonna look at my crankshaft for the CB7 and the damage on that journal for cylinder number two without the raw bearings. They're gonna tell me what I should do. Let's go. Bad news guys, it's toast. Especially if you look at it right there. Can't machine them too much, too much taken out. Oversized bearings don't really exist for that motor, so it's not worth it to me. Just gonna have to fork over the money to get a new crank. Oh my gosh. Now I'm at the dealer, I'm gonna get a price quote on a crankshaft and all the um, main bearings, rod bearings, and piston rings. This is not gonna be cheap. Got the quote here. Um, some of the bearings have actually been discontinued depending on the letter and color, so I actually have to do some more research on that. Um, the piston rings are actually uh, all discontinued which is not good uh, that's what I was worried about so um, but the crankshaft is really getting to me right now because the crankshaft I need um, 13310 PT3 315 is 1181.97 dollars for the crankshaft so that's not worth it I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna spend that much money on a crankshaft I'm not going to reuse that broken crankshaft and have to go through all this again. And so, I'm at a uh, crossroads here. No! Why? Okay, I know what I have to do now. Oh. 